Today I want to talk about a way to organize your painting, to create depth in your scene, and to keep your viewer's attention in your scene. So I heard of a great way of explaining how to organize your painting with your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. So today, that's what we're going to talk about, how to handle each one of those areas in your painting. Understanding what role each of these areas play in your painting is crucial to create depth in your scene. And also it's a very valuable tool in telling your viewers where to look and what's important in your scene. Let's talk about dividing your painting into foreground, middle ground, and background and what role each of those areas should play in your painting. So you can think of your painting like this. You have stage, you have seats, where the audience is, say your viewer is right here, and the front of the stage is here, and it goes back like this. Okay, so here you have a background, here is the middle ground with stuff stuff here and then here is the front of the stage and I've heard several artists talk about this Joseph Zbukvich has mentioned this Ian Roberts uh, he's a great artist and instructor and he's talked about this too so think of this as your viewer and here's your foreground here's your middle ground and here's your background so your foreground needs to not be too distracting. It needs to be enough information to lead the viewer to where all the action is in the middle ground. That's where your main actors are. And then your background needs to be just that. It needs to be a background. So if you think of this as a painting, if there's too much contrast in your background, if the colors are too warm, what it starts to do is encroach on the middle ground. And then all of a sudden this becomes confusing. And you can think of the same thing in your foreground. If there's too much here, it brings your foreground into the middle ground. And then you create confusion in your painting. And so if you look at paintings in the foreground, you want enough interest to lead the viewer into where the action is. And you want the background to simply be a background to be a backdrop, to create the illusion of distance. That's why minimizing the background. You, you know, we've talked about ways to simplify your painting. You can take a look at the video I have about simplification. Well, a big part of that is minimizing your background. So using cooler colors to push it back, using less contrast and softer edges, all those things will keep your background right in the back where it belongs and keep your viewers interest in the middle ground and same thing with your foreground if you have your most contrast your sharpest edges um, if you have more interest in the foreground than you need then your viewer is going to be stuck right here instead of moving their eyes and their attention to the middle ground where you want to keep their attention so think of this as a play and decide what your goals are for your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. And that will bring some organization and some clarity to your paintings. Your foreground needs some interest. It doesn't need to take away from the main actors in your scene. So don't overwork your foreground. Don't have a lot of texture, a lot of contrast. Don't have too much interest in your foreground. Understand that it's a supporting role to the main actors in your scene. In the middle ground, this is where all the action is. So this is where you want to have your most contrast, um, your main subjects are here, your, uh, the most saturation is most likely in the middle ground of your scene. This is where you want to keep your viewers attention. You want to lead them into your painting and you want to keep them in the middle ground of your scene. So your background is just that. It's a background. It's a backdrop to the action that is happening in the middle ground. If we Create too much interest in your background, too much contrast, too much texture. You're going to pull your background closer and you're going to lose separation between your middle ground and your background. And so you're going to lose a sense of depth 
And also you're losing clarity in your scene when your background is competing with your middle ground. So obviously there are exceptions to this rule, but I do think it's so helpful to understand the different areas of your painting and the role that they need to play in order to make a successful painting. So think about this, minimize your foreground, have enough interest, have some lead ins to where the main action is taking place. Keep the main action in the middle ground. This is where all your major actors are in your scene. This is where you want your viewer's attention to stay. And then minimize your background. Make sure that that's exactly what it is, is a background. So avoid your highest contrast, your sharpest edges. Use those as tools to keep the viewer's attention in the middle ground. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, how to avoid overworking your painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've gotten some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. So thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope that these tips are helpful and they can help you understand how to organize your painting better. So keep practicing, keep moving forward, and I'll see you next time.